Hello and welcome back to episode 2 of our Kerbal Space Program series here. Um, I've already accepted a couple missions here from Mission Control. Essentially, we're just trying to hit orbit today. That's all we're doing. I've already created a spaceship in order to do that. It should get us there. Um, we got four solid uh, fuel boosters on the sides and then our liquid fuel engine in the middle here. Um, we've already equipped all of our science and all of the uh, necessities in order to return to Kerbin safely. We have it uh, named Orbiter Mark 1 and without further ado, let's hit the launch pad. Oh, well it was already on the launch pad. We will clear it and... Oh, fantastic, okay. Great job. <laughs> All right, so we have our ship here. Uh, you can see that we're using the uh, the stability enhancers. This is for a mission, actually. Uh, let's see where it is here. Right here, the launch stability enhancers. And all we have to do is uh, hit spacebar, and we will complete that mission. Let's go ahead and turn SAS on to keep us in an upright position. And without further ado, we'll launch in three, two, one. So another pretty clean launch there. We didn't lose uh, any parts on the rocket itself. Um, no explosions, no catastrophic failures to speak of. And we are well on our way to orbit of Kerbin. After this mission, we should have enough science unlocked to start doing flybys of the moon, perhaps? It, it all depends on how much science this actually ends up getting us and uh, what parts we can unlock from it, right? So uh, the, the first thing I really want to do is, is unlock that, the, the, uh, the science parts with the, the science lab and everything like that and the batteries to give us additional power for while we're out in space. Good, there, we'll start our gravity turn here. And then aside from that, the other thing I wanna start doing here is, you know, I wanna get uh, a little bit better rocketry going for our program, as well as the capability to send out drones. That way we don't have to, uh, we don't have to fling our, our fellow Kerbins out to the, uh, the abyss, as it were. <laughs> Uh, let's go ahead and take a look here at our apoapsis. We're at about 30k right now. Uh, we need that to be about 75k before we uh, we shut the engines off. And we should be hitting that here relatively soon, as soon as we get out of the, uh, the initial uh, thick part of the atmosphere. We'll be able to pick up some velocity here pretty quick. Let's see, we're at about 45. We still have a little bit over half of our fuel left, so we should have more than enough here uh, in order to, to to get a solid orbit. We're about 60. And 75, we'll let it go a little bit higher, all right. So now that we have our apoapsis marked out, we'll go ahead. Oh, a little bit too high there. 110. Oh, phone buzzing. All right. So we have our marker laid out here. We'll go ahead and scoot it on over here. So we have our node in about 1 minute 20 seconds. So at about uh, 15 seconds, we're going to start our burn. 16 seconds, somewhere around there. Let's go ahead and line these guys up. We will start our burn. So like I said, well, we're running a little bit shy on fuel, but that should still be enough to get us into an orbit. The trick from there is to get out of orbit, of course, so we're going to need a little bit of fuel left over in order to do that. Let's 
see this marker kind of scooting away from us here a little bit. Maybe I have 74. Seventy-seven. All right. So that is a good orbit around Kerbin. Let's go ahead and do a mystery goo experiment for ten science. We're gonna do a crew report for five, and they've already had an EVA over water. So maybe if we can get it. I wonder if that's gonna be good enough here. Above the grasslands, yeah. So, eight more science. We will go ahead and board. And that's about all we can do for our first uh, orbital adventure here in Kerbal Space Program. So, we're going to go ahead and bring this back around to our periapsis. And we're going to start a burn to return back to Kerbin. And once this periapsis marker disappears, that essentially means that we are on a, uh, a crash course, as it were, back to the uh, planet's surface. So we can go ahead and speed up time here. And once we get a little bit closer to the planet, I'm going to go ahead and jettison off uh, the rest of this rocket, that way we ensure that it doesn't just hang out in space floating around the planet for the rest of our game here, because um, it's not really something that I would want to be running into uh, in later flights. So let's go ahead and jettison. <gasps> Jesus! That thing can't... Oh, it's because I have, I have time warp on. <laughs> Alright, so... We're about 50,000 meters up above the surface right now. We're going to go ahead and uh, continue speeding time up. As we see the, uh, the rest of our rocket there slowly descend towards, uh, towards Kerbin's surface to meet its, uh, its horrific doom in a fiery explosion. And up here we can see we're about to start hitting the thicker part of the atmosphere. And you can see that kind of taking effect right there. And we're actually, we're not too far off at this point. So let's go ahead and slow, well we'll get a little bit closer here. Let's go ahead and deploy our parachute. And once that fully deploys, we'll know we're about 300 meters above the ground. And we should be coming in for a, a, a fairly soft landing here. We'll try to do a, a surface sample to see if that gives us anything. Uh, I'm pretty sure we've already taken one over uh, in, in some other grasslands, so I don't know if it's actually going to give us much science or not, but it's definitely worth a shot. <clears throat> what a peaceful landing, you know, in comparison to, uh, to everything else in this game. Like when you first take off, all of your rockets are going, and there's always a, can a chance for a for an explosion to happen, but when you're landing, it's just very peaceful. It takes a little while, but peaceful. So now that we're about down here on the ground, da -da, let's go ahead and do an EVA, and we'll see if we can't take a uh, surface sample here. Uh, we can get a couple, a couple little bits of science out of it. And we'll go ahead and recover our vessel, and we will see how much we get from that mission. All right, so you can tell here that we got quite a bit, actually. Um, we are up to 106 science, so that should be giving us more than enough to unlock some more parts here. Uh, Bill Kerman was our was our pilot that mission. Uh, 
a brave soul for sure. Uh, so we got some good funding back to the program as well as some reputation. Let's go ahead and take a look at our R&D building here. We can see we have 106 science up there. So we should be able to unlock uh, two things here today. So advanced rocketry is very tempting. These radial mounts are also very tempting. The drone stuff I'm not too worried about yet. I think we still have a couple more missions before we're really going to be needing those. Um, the science stuff, however, is, is going to be pretty important uh, for these next couple missions. So I want to go ahead and pick the, that up. And that's going to unlock some more, uh, some more parts down here for later. Uh, what else do we have here? Yeah, I don't I just I don't think I can go without having those radial decouplers. I know I have these, but they just uh, they don't they don't work super well. And I'd rather have uh, the tricoupler, the struts, and then the launch stability as well. So let's go ahead and pick that up. And that's going to give us uh, the opportunity to get some fuel ducts going in uh, in some later missions as well as get some adapters for some of the bigger parts out there. So that's going to do it for today's episode. A little bit on the shorter side, but uh, we did a successful orbit around Kerbin. We got some more parts here, and I uh, hope you guys are enjoying the, the new series here. Uh, let me know if you do. Leave a comment, uh, a like, or whatever else, and we will be seeing you next time.